Good afternoon and welcome to your daily Star Trek news. Today is Sunday, May 15th, 2022. Coming up on the show today, Wilson Cruz has won a prestigious award from GLAAD. Star Trek Online Stormfall lands on PCs. Uh, Marina Sirtis' new film is available to stream now. And we've got a brand new trailer for the Orville. Uh, plus, sadly, a few more members of our uh, extended Star Trek family uh, passed away this week. Uh, so I'll tell you more about them uh, later on in the show. Uh, excuse me. My name is Allison Pitt. Today's show is supported by people like you through Patreon. You can find out more and add your support at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. Now, I do want to remind you that uh, everything we talk about on the show uh, today uh, and more <laughs> is available on dailystartreknews.com. We've got uh, all of the uh, articles, the links to their original sources, uh, extra pictures, videos, uh, and some uh, extra fun stuff as well. So uh, we've got our events listing trivia and history uh it's a it's a good place you should check it out uh, and of course if you want all that delivered straight to your inbox you can sign up for the daily star trek newsletter at dailystartreknews.com forward slash contact all right uh you know before i'm gonna take a break for a second before we get on with the rest of the show i will straight up say that this is like a downer of a show this week um this is uh we have uh four obituaries this week, which basically dominated our entire news cycle. Um, and I find it important to bring that news to you guys, because um, what I found is that even the most, the smallest guest actor on a show or the, the, the person who makes just the smallest contribution to the Star Trek universe, uh, people find it interesting and they want to celebrate their lives and they're there it's, it's always someone's favorite um but it makes it not that fun of a show uh we're going to try and celebrate their lives a little bit more but that will be tw uh, sort of in the middle of the show we'll do that before uh show and tell and all that uh but just generally speaking this week is a real hard one for like news of the world and all of that kind of stuff um so something personal for me uh if you have the opportunity this week actually don't uh, make the opportunity to please go and do something good because we're not going to get to Star Trek uh, if we don't make our world better. So please, like, do something. Anyway, that's my personal plea. Um, all right. So the way this show normally goes, uh, we'll do the news first, and then I'll do some show and tell. We'll look at our uh, weekly poll. Uh, and then if you stick around, if you're listening to this on the podcast, if you stick around uh, at the end on YouTube, we'll do some chat towards the end, etc. Uh, so the poll this week uh, is actually gaming themed. So we have uh, Star Trek Online's latest season called Stormfall is out this week. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Uh, but I'm curious to know whether you are a Star Trek gamer. Um, there's actually, you know, for a while there pretty much was just Star Trek Online. And now there's a few options that you have. So my question for you, uh, there's a few options for are you a Star Trek gamer? It's uh, yes, any and all, anything you can get your hands on, you'll play. Um, yes, but only Star Trek Online. Um, I actually know quite a few uh, gamers who only play Star Trek Online. That's the only game they play. Uh, yes, but you only do mobile games. That's because there's a few of those out there now as well. Um, and uh, not yet. <laughs> I didn't put no because... You, my experience as a gamer, because like, for instance, I I don't really like the shoot 'em up, beat 'em up games. I prefer narrative storytelling games. Uh, generally speaking, uh, if you're not a gamer right now, probably you just haven't found the game for you yet. So those are your choices today uh, to are you a Star Trek gamer? Yes, everything. Yes, Star Trek Online only. Yes, mobile games only or not yet. Anyway, right. So uh, let's get on with the actual really happy, awesome, good news. And the first one is congratulations to Star Trek Discovery's Wilson Cruz for winning the prestigious Vito Russo Award uh, uh, at the Glad Media Awards uh, recently. This is... Um, it this is a special award. It's not like for, uh, you know, a role or anything like that, but it's a special award. Um, and it was meant to uh, commend him for his literal decades of service to the LGBTQ community. So um, a little bit about this award. Uh, it's 
It's named in honor of GLAD's co-founder, Vito uh, Russo. I keep trying to say Russell. It's Vito Russo. Um, And it is presented to an LGBTQ media professional who has made a significant difference in accelerating LGBTQ acceptance, which I think uh, most of us who have followed Wilson Cruz through his career would absolutely agree with that. Uh, Previous uh, winners of this award uh, include Ryan Murphy, Andy Cohen, uh, Samira Wiley, and Billy Porter. You probably recognize those names. So uh, here's what uh, GLAD president and CEO Sarah Kate Ellis said about Wilson Cruz with this award. (laughs) When books are written about actors coming out, Wilson Cruz belongs on the front cover. Wilson has dedicated his life and career to breaking down walls for LGBTQ and Latinx actors and has not only entertained audiences as a triple threat, but educated the world about LGBTQ people and issues. He raises the bar for for how actors can and should play roles in social justice by always using his voice loudly to demand acceptance of LGBTQ people and Black and Latinx communities. Now, of course, if you remember back to the days of My So-Called Life, which is one of my favorite shows of all times, I don't mind saying, um, he broke barriers when he, because he was an openly gay actor playing an openly gay role, and that was something that did not exist uh, before uh, before my so-called life. So um, well done to Wilson Cruz for this. It is certainly a well-deserved award. Uh, he himself about it called it one of the proudest moments of my life. Uh, so yeah, once again, congratulations to uh, Wilson Cruz for winning the Vito Russo uh, Special Award from the GLAD Media Awards. Uh, very well deserved. And uh, I think it's fair to say that all of us in the Star Trek community are very, very proud to have him um, be be part of the Star Trek family. Right. So next up, I talked to you about uh, Stormfall. I think we told you a few weeks back that Stormfall uh, for Star Trek Online was coming, and now it's landed. Uh, It was a few hiccups (laughs) earlier in the week. If you were a Star Trek Online player, you know what I mean. Uh, It was not the smoothest of launches. However, it is here now, um, and uh, it was an interesting... So it was a really interesting launch to give you a little bit behind the scenes on things like this. Normally, we get a little bit of a preview of what's coming up uh, they actually did more of like a launch um like a trailer launch thing on the day that it actually released so we didn't actually get to see it but now there is a wonderful trailer that's out it's action-packed and there are surprises in there that we didn't even know about so we knew that kate mulgrew was coming back we knew that mary wiseman and chase masterson were coming back we also knew that there was going to be the addition of um noah averbach cats playing an andorian called rayit uh, so he's there uh what we didn't know is that uh, like ilea isn't it um, I'm assuming it's Ilea Probe because she's got the thing. Uh, and there's kind of a um, Star Trek, the motion picture theme going on there. I, I haven't played the episode myself, but I would highly encourage that if you are interested in playing Star Trek online, you go and check out the trailer first uh, and then go download the game. Uh, it's, uh, as I've told you before, it's a free to play MMO. Uh, there, uh, it, There's stuff that you can buy if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, it's very easy to get into and um, turn up the sound in Earth Space Dock. <laughs> I will put the link to the trailer um, in the show notes for this episode, so please, please go and watch it uh, and enjoy. Uh, yes, enjoy. Right, so... Um, The next story, we're kind of catching up with somebody that we haven't actually heard from in a while. So um, Marina Sirtis uh, has has left the United States. Uh, It was kind of a big deal when she she left L.A. and went back to London after the death of her husband a a few years ago. Um, And now she's got a new movie out, which is available for you to stream if you want to. So she's stepping back into a a similar counseling role. the, the movie is called A Thousand Little Cuts, and she's playing the part of a psychiatrist who is counseling a young woman who's been a victim of domestic violence um, and is having trouble piecing together exactly what's happened. Uh, you can watch the trailer now. That's on YouTube, and the film is available for download um, and streaming on various streaming platforms, but I would definitely go check it out. It's a, um, It looks pretty heavy. <laughs> So if you are triggered by um, 
domestic violence and other um, issues like that, you might want to steer clear, but you can go and watch the trailer and see what I'm talking about. What it looks like is actually a really interesting sort of psychological thriller piecing together a mystery after the fact. Uh, but it's lovely to see Marina Sirtis uh, back, on, uh, back on the screens. And uh, yeah, if you were wondering what she's been up to uh, since leaving LA, you can find out. Uh, finally today, in terms of news news, um, yeah, the Orville is coming back. I mean, we knew it. Uh, we're just over two weeks away, I think. Two weeks away, yeah. Uh, June 2nd is when it's coming out, um, premiering exclusively on Hulu. Uh, uh, it's showing exclusively on Hulu. I shouldn't say premiering because it's, Hulu is now the home of the Orville after having been on uh, Fox for a couple of years. Um, we've had some gorgeous looking key art come out and now there's a new trailer. Now, I'm not going to recap the entire trailer because it's a trailer, so it doesn't really make that much sense and it's two and a half minutes long. Um, but I would encourage you to go and watch it. Some of the things that we can see, we are picking up from where we left off at the end of season two, which is um, we had the, the war with the Kalon. Uh, Isaac is back on the ship. So uh, they basically have, they've got a Kalon officer on the ship. And so there's going to be some, clearly some discussions about uh, how how that's going to work. Uh, and then we, we see some uh, sort of um, agreement between... Um, not the Federation, what's it called? I can never remember. Um, from the Orville. Planetary Union, that's the one. The Union and uh, the Krill, who are historically, you know, at odds with one another, having kind of a um, cooperation. Uh, and then the stories that come out of that. So it looks really great. It looks very in keeping um, with what we've seen before. Uh, if you uh, follow the Orville at all, you will notice in the trailer, there are actually two actors in the trailer who have actually since passed away um, since the last season. Um, so uh, the character of Yafit was played by Norm MacDonald, who passed away a couple uh, a year or so ago. Uh, and also Lisa Baines, who tragically passed away last year, uh, is also playing a, a big part in there. So look out for them. Um, and of course, mark your calendars for June 2nd, because the Orville is coming back to Hulu. Right. Okay, so uh, the next part of the show is uh, I'm going to read through the obituaries and you know I like to do this because um, David and Chris have done a really wonderful job of um, talking about the people who have passed away and um, making sure that you sort of get a full picture of who they are. Because a lot of times the people that we talk about um, who have passed away on this show are guest actors. They may have only been in one episode of Star Trek, uh, but quite frequently their impact on the industry as a whole has been far more significant than, you know, <laughs> that, that one guy in the third season episode. A lot of times the, it was a pretty big cameo to have them um, as part of Star Trek. Anyway, I, I will stop waffling. Sorry, it's, it's just one of those kind of days. Um, right. So uh, we're going to start off with um, uh, the actor by the name of Michael G. Haggerty, who uh, I personally did not recognize his name, but I definitely recognized his face. He was a prolific television and film character actor from the early 1980s um, all the way up to today. Uh, most recently, he was a series regular on the show Somebody Somewhere, which ran earlier on HBO. According to Wikipedia, he was known for his mustache and thick Chicago accent, um, but he played a couple of different characters on uh, Star Trek over the years. Uh, he passed away on April 29th at the age of 67. Um, uh, I apologize, I don't know what the cause of death was. Um, Haggerty played many roles from Seinfeld and Friends to Boston Legal and Dick Tracy. He's known to Star Trek fans for his appearances as the Klingon Captain Larg in the Star Trek The Next Generation Season 5 episode, Redemption 2, and as the Barconian blacksmith Scorin in the seventh season TNG episode, Thine Own Self. He also appeared in the 1996 video game Star Trek Klingon as the bartender Mesca. Uh, Bridget Everett who is Haggerty's co-star on Somebody Somewhere, said he was a beloved character actor. His love of his hometown of Chicago and his family were the cornerstones of his life. He will be sorely missed. Um, you can find out uh, more about 
uh, Michael or Mike Haggerty's uh, life and career. Uh, it was a really great article by Ian Spelling over on Heavy that talked more in depth about that. Uh, please go check that out. Uh, the next actor up is um, a man by the name of Jack Keeler. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because uh, David wrote the obituary and he leads it off with a quote. He says, dude, uh, tomorrow's already the 10th, far out. Uh, so that's uh, from The Big Lebowski. Uh, fans of The Big Lebowski will remember this exchange between the dude and Marty, his landlord, Star Trek fans will also know the man who played Marty Jack Keeler. Um, again, Ian Spelling of Red Heavy uh, shared the news with us. He died on Saturday, May 7th of complications from leukemia at the age of 75. A native Philadelphian, Keeler decided to pursue theater at the age of 24 and made his film debut as a gas station attendant in Strange Invaders in 1983, uh, which also cast several other eventual Trek alumni. He would go on to do many guest and character roles in television and film. Uh, Marty, perhaps being his best known, as well as some recurring television roles, such as The Man in the High Castle. Keeler made his lone Star Trek appearance in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 1 episode, Babel. He plays the uh, Boslik freighter captain who docked at Deep Space Nine uh, and was transporting a shipment of... Uh, something that I can't pronounce, uh, to Largo 5. Um, that was a wonderful episode. Um, anyway, uh, referring to his own decision to pursue acting, Keeler had said, I made a list of four things I liked and felt connected to, even though I didn't know how to do them. One was theater, well, and the other three were uh, writing, playing guitar, and woodworking. At times, I thought I was starting too late to have a real career, but then I realized Vincent Van Gogh didn't pick up a paintbrush until he was 27. Um, so yeah, once again, uh, head over to heavy.com for more information on the life and career of Jack Keeler. Um, a more recent Star Trek um, guest actor, uh, Kenneth Welsh, who played the Admiral Senna Tall in the emotional Star Trek Discovery episode, Forget Me Not, uh, and whose voice, uh, his, it was his voice that was transmitted in the beacon in the, in the prior episode, People of Earth, uh, passed away at the age of 80. Uh, his death was confirmed by the Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television, and Radio Artists, or ACTRA. Um, they confirmed that um, via social media over the weekend. Um, their announcement said, Actra Toronto is extremely saddened today by the passing of Kenneth Welsh. Ken was one of Canada's all-time great performers with hundreds of memorable roles spanning decades. He will be greatly missed. Uh, now, Kenneth Welsh was a staple in the film and television industry for nearly 60 years. He began studying the, the acting craft at the National Theatre School of Montreal before spending several years on stage with the distinguished, uh, excuse me, distinguished Stratford Festival. In the 1960s, Welsh made the jump to television in the uh, CBC experimental series, Shoestring Theatre. From there, he appeared in numerous television series and a plethora of TV movies, including Loose Ends, Empire Inc., and The Twilight Zone. In 1990, Welsh was cast as FBI agent Wyndham Earl in the short-lived but well-respected Twin Peaks, which I know there's a lot of crossover fans between Twin Peaks and Star Trek. Now, while the actor only appeared in 10 of the series' 48 episodes, the Earl character became a central figure, cementing Welsh's name in the lexicon of science fiction. He later appeared in well-known productions such as Kung Fu, The Legend Continues, Time Cop, The X-Files, Law and & Order, Legends of the Fall, and The Day After Tomorrow, uh, before coming to Star Trek Discovery in its third season. Discovery actor Patrick Kwok Chun posted a message to fans regarding his passing, uh, which read, Saddened to hear about the passing of Kenneth Welsh. Uh, Ken played Admiral Senatal in season three of Discovery. Um, yeah. And finally today, uh, comic book artist George Perez. Um, and some of you may be wondering what's the Star Trek connection there because he was actually a really famous comic book artist. I will get to that in just a second. Uh, George Perez, uh, the artist who shared his detailed realistic renderings that captured both the power and the humanity of his characters died um, a couple weeks ago, I think it was Friday a week, uh, of pancreatic cancer at 
at the age of 67, and that was that came to us via Variety. Prior to retiring in 2019 due to health issues, Perez, who was from a South Bronx Puerto Rican family, spent 45 years drawing and writing comics for DC, Marvel, and other comic publishers. And while he is best known for his work on characters like uh, Superman, Thor, Captain America, um, as well as things like the new Teen Titans. Uh, he brought his artisanship to DC's Who's Who in Star Trek and to the covers of the first three issues of Star Trek, from, also from DC, um, which ran from 1984 to 1988. He also contributed retailer incentive covers for 2014's Star Trek and Planet of the Apes crossover, which was called The Primate Directive, which is an excellent series if you haven't read it. Uh, Perez's close friend Constance Iza said of him as she announced his death, everyone knows George's legacy as a creator. His art, characters, and stories will be revered for years to come. But as towering as that legacy is, it pales in comparison to the legacy of the man George was. George's true legacy is his kindness. It's the love he had for bringing others joy. And I hope you all carry that with you always. Um, over the years, Perez had, was recognized with several awards, including four Eagle Awards, two Jack Kirby Awards, an Inkpot Award, and a Lifetime Achievement Inkwell Award for his work as an artist. His work also influenced Patty Jenkins, who directed Wonder Woman 2017, and uh, it was an inspiration for Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Um, and in addition to his art, Perez served uh, the Hero Initiative, a provider of health and medical assistance to comic book professionals. If you were still here, thank you. Um, I think it's important to allow these wonderful people's lives to take up some time in our lives so that we can remember them. Please join me and everyone here at Daily Star Trek News in sending condolences to their families. Right, thank you for that. Um, we now uh, will move on a little bit um, to uh, some other stuff. Um, so before I get into uh, this week's show and tell and our poll results. Uh, I do just want to uh, remind you that everything we do here is really supported by our Patreon supporters. Uh, if you are enjoying what we do and you would like to support us some more, please consider making a monthly contribution. We have options from just a dollar a month. Um, you can find out more about that at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. Now, don't forget uh, as well, there's also a poll running in the chat. If you haven't registered your vote, please do that now. Uh, and of course, if you're listening to this back later, you can go and check it out on Twitter at Daily Trek News. The poll will run there. Um, it's a 24-hour poll, so it'll be there um, through tomorrow. Um, Two quick housekeeping things. Um, I, you know, I mentioned earlier in the show. You know, please go and do something, um, do something good to make the world a better place. Um, to that end, uh, if you are somebody who is uh, a fan of the Star Trek philosophy, which I think you might be <laughs> if you're watching this show, if you are somebody who is a fan of the Star Trek philosophy, and you are somebody who is active in direct action, uh, please uh, reach out to me at info at dailystartreknews.com. I am looking to partner up with somebody who is uh, interested in helping inspire other Star Trek fans into um, some direct action. So uh, if that uh, describes you, please reach out. Um, I would like to hear from you. Uh, all right. So, I struggled actually. <laughs> I almost feel like I'm running out of stuff to do show and tell with. Um, not quite, not, not quite, I'm not running out. Um, but I do sort of worry about that from time to time. So uh, somebody asked me weeks ago if there's stuff that, like if you wanna send me stuff to do show and tell, I will absolutely do that. Our PO box is on the website, so go and do that. But as it happens uh, this week, I actually found um, something that works really thematically well um, for a number of reasons. So um, I was kind of thinking about, we, I mean, mentally we've all moved on to Star Trek Strange New Worlds, right? There actually wasn't hardly any time to kind of judge, digest the end of Star Trek Picard. Um, and I was reflecting on uh, where it all started. Um, and of course, uh, with the death of George Perez this week, uh, I have comic books on the mind. Also, I'm sad because I missed free comic book day last week. Um, that made me sad. I just 
went past me. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, what I have in my hand is um, comics. So cast your mind back to 2019, 2020. Uh, before Star Trek Picard premiered, IDW did a series of um, Star Trek Picard countdown. This is the, uh, there we go. Um, that's the first, the first issue. Um, and I have all three because... <laughs> I, because I do. Uh, they're fantastic. Um, I don't know if any of you guys read these. Uh, if you haven't and you're a fan of Picard, I would actually recommend... Hi. Please focus. There we go. There we, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you haven't read these yet uh, and you're a fan of Picard, I would uh, recommend that you go back into it. They're a quick read. They're not super heavy, uh, but they do actually provide some really good background and lead into, into Star Trek Picard. Um, I also wanted to share, I don't know if any of you remember, but it was kind of, so I, I, I love these comic books because these were kind of my entree into my current comic obsession, which I actually don't read many Star Trek comics, but I do read other, I'm really into like the, like the weird, um, indie ones. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. The Picard comics, because I was doing this show and because we were gearing up for Star Trek Picard, um, this was the first comic book the title that I ever went through and asked them to actually pull for me. Uh, and that kind of kicked off my relationship with my local comic book shop. And I love going there now. Um, and it's brought a tremendous amount of joy into my life. But what was interesting about this series is, um, and if anybody reads comics, you'll know that this happens from time to time, especially limited series. Sometimes stuff happens. And I can't remember what it was that happened, but um, they were scheduled that they were going to drop um, issue one, two, three, and it was going to, the, the third issue was going to drop right before uh, Picard aired. So I want to say the, the third issue was due to come out like the 15th of January, and then Picard was going to start on the 23rd or something like that. It was, um, it was designed so that it would like boom, 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 hit, and then it would lead straight into. And of course, um, if you recall as well, ar around this time, we had uh, the short treks, Children of Mars. Episode three did not, or issue three did not drop. Um, I remember calling the um, the comic book shop and going like, "What? Like, what's the deal? And I can't remember exactly when it did drop, but it was well into, um, I think it was probably a couple weeks after Picard started. So it you, you kind of missed the, <laughs> you kind of missed the ending of the comic um, that you were kind of supposed to have before that happened. I mean, you didn't really miss anything. I mean, obviously most people would consider books and comic books sort of soft canon. I hate using that word. Uh, so you didn't like, it's not like you wouldn't know what was going on in Picard if you hadn't read the comics. Um, but it's just a little funny reflecting back on it that that was like a very early hiccup for the whole, um, you know, their big um, multimedia uh, blitz, which, sorry, slight tangent, um, you can tell I'm like a production nerd and I really love all this stuff behind the scenes. Um, when Discovery was announced, one of the things that they talked about extensively, especially with the addition of Kirsten Beyer as part of the writing team, was the fact that we were finally going to have a cohesive presentation across not only television, but also the uh, other media the stuff that falls into memory beta instead of memory alpha, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, this is one of the, um, the outputs of that. Of course, if you look at the bottom there, it is written by Bayer Johnson, Hernandez, and La Fuente. Um, the, the presence of Kirsten Bayer being somebody who was writing for Star Trek on television, as well as coordinating the stories and novels and things that were happening um, outside of the TV series um, is a real step change. And um, I, again, I also don't read the novels just because I'm, I never have any time to do anything, but um, using the way that they've used the novels and the comic books, for instance, to kind of fill in those gaps between seasons and, you know, people's backstories and things like that has been um, 
a really cool and modern way to, to present things for the series. Anyway, go and get them. I believe you can probably get these as a, um, as a bound book because they usually do that too. Um, if you recall back before 2009, I want to say they did a different, uh, they did a countdown series as well that led up into uh, the Star Trek 2009 movie uh but you can get that as a as a bound edition now too oh, sorry i'm looking <laughs> i had a comment on the youtube channel the other day about like what's what's what is in the rest of your room because <laughs> you're always looking past the um camera um you can't see it but over there this is my television um and there's a bookshelf underneath it with a whole bunch of star trek stuff on it so i've got imzadi down there and i've got uh, a couple comic books i've got uh yeah, the Countdown series is down there. The Star Tree, the the Starfleet Academy series is down there. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, that's beside the point. So that is my uh, that is my Star Trek show and tell for for this week is the uh, Star Trek Picard Countdown comics. And I've said it before, and I will say it again. If you are at all interested in comics at all, please don't buy stuff online. I mean, you can, unless there's something like super rare, in which case you go to eBay, because that's all the, that's usually comic shops that sell on eBay. Find a local comic shop. You will not regret it. Anyway. All right. Okay. So <laughs> we have done show and tell. Uh, I'll give you guys another couple of minutes to vote here and interesting. Vote here in the poll on um star trek oh i've just because i just went and looked at the poll i've just seen paul Wright in the chat who says "Ooh, imzadi is one of my all-time favorite star trek novels it's on my shelf too yeah i know i've done show and tell about this one before but that copy of imzadi is amazing <laughs> because it is one that I picked up at STLV, and it is inscribed to majel barrett uh from peter david the author I love it so much. It's like one of my like like great geeky amazing possessions that I will never ever get rid of. And there's only a small subset of people that would actually kind of um, get like how insanely cool that is. Anyway, anyway, you've just you've just witnessed the point in the show where I get embarrassed about how gigantic of a Star Trek nerd that I am. Anyway. Um, okay, let's look at the poll results on Twitter. All right. Interestingly enough, they're actually not too uh, not too dissimilar from um, from the YouTube. So I have asked you guys, are you a Star Trek gamer? Um, I, I, I regret that I did not put Star Trek Adventures. I know that there are RPG people out there who do Star Trek Adventures. Uh, I didn't include that one here. But your choices were yes, everything. Yes, but only Star Trek Online. Yes, but only the mobile games. And, and um, not yet. <laughs> and really, most people have said not yet, which I think is... Uh, Interesting, because like I said before, I think if you're not a gamer, you just haven't quite found the right uh, game for you yet on your platform. I'm hoping. So we have actually a, a couple that are coming out that are really, really different. So uh, Star Trek Resurgence is coming out <laughs> on a date TBD. I don't know when it is coming out. Uh, but that looks to be uh, much more of a narrative style. And um I don't know if you guys know what sort of narrative games are like. Uh, there's no usually shooting or anything like that. Um, I don't personally like fighting and shooting in my video games. Uh, I personally like the ones that are uh, an unfolding mystery or the ones where your, uh, your choices uh, affect the outcome of the game, uh, which looks like kind of what Resurgence will be. Uh, we also have... Um, We've, they've announced uh, the new Star Trek Prodigy game, which we don't really have any details on yet, but um, that's going to be like a kid's game on console and PC. Um, and, you know, again, that's super different from anything like Star Trek Online or uh, Timelines or the one that I can never remember the name of that's on Apple Arcade. Um, there is a broad, if you are at all interested in Star Trek, gaming at all, there's probably going to be a game for you by the end of this year. I'm marking it right now. Anyway, um, so yeah, most people, not yet. And the same is true. I'm going to, oh wait, I haven't ended the poll. <laughs> I'm going to end the poll here on YouTube. Um, 
Okay, yeah, so most people on, on YouTube as well, uh, you're not a Star Trek gamer yet. Um, the, followed by, yes, Star Trek Online only. Um, and 9% of people have said they will play anything Star Trek related. And uh, 4% said uh, the mobile only games. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a note to ask this question again towards the end of the year. Because I'm curious to find out when we have... Um, because really so far we've had like, we've had the MMO with Star Trek Online. We've had like a CCG game, which is uh, kind of like uh, Timelines and the other one. Um, we've had a few other sort of traditional mobile games in there over the years. Um, but I think Resurgence is going to be a, a return to the older style, um, slower narrative type games. And then who knows what's going to happen with the Prodigy one. So we'll see. Um, anyway. Is that it? That's it for the show, isn't it? <laughs> I've done the news, uh, I've done show and tell, and we've done the poll. That's pretty much it. All right, cool. Well, listen, I'm going to wrap things up here. Uh, but if you were with me on YouTube live, please uh, stick around and we'll have some chat. Um, I'll try to be less miserable than I have for the majority of the show today. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Um, just a reminder, if you are listening to us on the podcast today, you should come over and join us on YouTube because, um, I mean, I'm, I've just flipped over to the chat now. I don't know they're having a whole conversation <laughs> that, uh, that I'm not even part of. So, uh, yeah, it's a really good group of people in the chat. You can meet some fellow Star Trek fans and you get sort of like an, a little extra dimension uh, to the news so please come and check us out uh, we're daily star trek news on youtube and this show goes live every sunday from 2 p.m pacific time and we would love to see you there anyway uh remember that you can find all of this week's stories including some of the ones that didn't make it into the show uh as well as the trivia history our events listing and of course we have uh, all the links to the videos original photos original articles everything is uh there at daily StarTrekNews.com. Uh, that is the, the place that you would sign up for the Daily Star Trek newsletter as well, dailystartreknews.com forward slash contact, uh, at which point we just give you everything uh, free to your inbox every weekday morning. Anyway, thank you again for listening. This show is produced by me, Allison Pitt, and all of the stories uh, for today were written by uh, Chris Peterson, Marina Kravchuk, Jack Brown, T. Rick Jones, and David Powell. And of course, the show is supported by people like you through Patreon. You can find out more about that and how to add your support at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. I will be back next week with more of the Star Trek news you need to know. I'm Allison Pitt. Live long and prosper. And I'm going to be honest, I hope next week uh, has fewer obituaries. It's really not my favorite part of all of this. Um, but I know that people appreciate it. So, all right. Hello to everybody in the chat. Thank you for joining me. Uh, sorry I'm a bit miserable today. I, I woke up really just not feeling it. And, um, you know, the news is not not the most fun and exciting right now. So um, thanks for sticking with me. Anyway, uh, so, so Anne in the chat says, I don't know if, when, or how I'll ever get into gaming. Is there a game where you're a first day academy student? <laughs> That's the one I need to play if it's accessible. Um, and yeah, I'm interested actually, Anne, because you seem like a person, and you and I have talked, of course, um, at length. <clears throat> you seem like a person who would like to play games, but there isn't one for you yet. And especially because you have accessibility needs, I am curious because I really don't know about that, those kind of developments in the um, in the gaming industry. Uh, I really, really hope that there is a way that you can play games at some point. Um, maybe I'll look into it. I don't know. It's interesting. Anyway. Um, so Paul Wright in the chat has re revealed um, that he's a liar and that Imzadi is not on his shelf because he just gone, went and looked for it. Are you sure? Are you sure that somebody hasn't stolen it? Because it's an excellent, excellent book. I, I want to say there's a sequel too, although I haven't read it. 
I went back recently and watched um, Encounter at Far Point, which if you haven't watched that episode recently, go and do it because it's a, it's a real... Uh, as I've ranted about it on this show, it's a real interesting look to go back and see what they thought that Star Trek was going to be like in 1987 or 88. Uh, very interesting. Um, they, uh, they're they really overt about um, the, the Riker and Troy thing. It's super awkward, actually, <laughs> when they first meet. Yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. They, it's, so actually, uh, Paul, it's really interesting. So Paul in the chat has said, yep, Imzadi, it's great. It, it actually interests me that you like that book because I, I mean, I, I've, I take it as, as like a, it's like a romance. No, it's not a romance novel. It's not like that. Although there is nudity technically, but I mean, there's no pictures, <laughs> but um you know, it's, for me, it's like a, it's a romantic book. I mean, it's about Troy and Riker's relationship. I mean, there is other Star Trek sci-fi stuff going on. Um, you got the Guardian of Forever. That's cool. Um, but I really have always considered it a pretty girly book, if that makes sense. Uh, so I think it's cool that you like it. So... Uh, and yes, Imzadi, Imzadi 2 is the sequel. It's one that I haven't read. Because I think we, uh, uh, Imzadi says it all, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Forgive me, it's really hot today. Um, I don't have a temperature. It's been like in the 90s here in California. Um, it's been very, very hot. Um, okay, Referring to uh, the Picard comics... Robert Kaiser points out in the chat um, that one of the key the, the key things that happens in the comics is you find that the backstory about Laris and um, uh, Jaban and why they're with Picard. I mean, I think they kind of gloss over it in the series. You kind of learn, but there's a there's a lot um, there's more in here about how that relationship started and why it was that strong. Uh, it probably is also, <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, Robert, because now I want to go back and look because of course the, um, the events of Star Trek Picard season two, two, yeah, season two, um, where there's kind of like a romantic thing happening between Laris and Picard. Um, that's kind of like their origin story. So, Yeah. Paul says uh, he is, has all three digitally, but he never read the third one. Come on. It's, it's like 10 minutes. They're actually really short. Um, if you read comics, like um, there are some comics that take a while to get through. This is not one of them. It's really pretty, though. Uh, also, I really cannot condone reading comics digitally. If that's the only way you have access, then it's better than not. Uh, but... For me personally, I need to have them, which is, is actually causing a little bit of a storage issue <laughs> in my house. Uh, but I, I really don't think you can beat the actual pages being in front of you. Um, Sorry, I'm scrolling. <laughs> I forgot that we were still streaming for a second. Hi. Uh... <laughs> Christoph in the chat referring to the poll about gaming. Does the interactive manual count as a game Windows 3.1 screensavers? The DOS version of Star Trek. Uh I'm actually curious. Do any of you play the old? Because I know that every once in a while they come out on uh, on emulators. I know that last year one of the one of the publishers put out all of the old like Star Trek Armada games. I want to say you could buy them in a bundle or individually. I don't know. I never played any of those. I think 
Oh, but here's like, okay, slight tangent. So where I live, I'm actually really close to one of the last remaining micro centers in the country. Uh, and I remember as a kid going to micro center and having those big, like, you remember the big boxes with the floppy disks in them and it took like seven disks to play a video game. Good times. Anyway. Um, Alamorain BC. You know what? I've just realized I never turned on this guy. I don't know if it turns. There we go. Uh, the reason I thought about that is because um, for those of you who've been watching this show for a while, you will know that BC always used to used to pay attention to my moon, which is up there. You can't see it because it's. I used to record over there, and now I'm over here. Anyway, um, I forgot to turn on my Elcars display. <sighs> I'm hoping that one of these days, um, Dr. Mohammed Noor, who said he was in the chat but cooking dinner, I'm hoping that he's going to invite us all around for dinner because it sounds amazing. <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. So uh, <laughs> apparently Muhammad is back chatting in the chat. Hello. He says, I wrote a computer Star Trek RPG program back in about 1985. I've tried to find it since then, but no luck. I did upload it to some local BBSs, so maybe it'll show up again someday. I so want that. Isn't it sad? So those of us who grew up in the 80s, there was so much forward thinking at the time. Um, you know, there were there were ways that you could upload things to the internet, BBSs, and um, I can't even remember if we had forums back then, um, but there were places you could go and share stuff like that. And now you just think about the kids these days. I mean, see, what I want is for somebody to scrape the Wayback Machine, find that RPG, that Star Trek RPG, and throw it on GitHub and, you know, bring it up to, to speed. Because there are still, like, even the text-based RPGs, like, um, did anybody play the, um, what's it called, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy game? I hated. I always, always died. I always got bulldozed by the Vogons. I think I forgot my towel, but then I hadn't, I was like eight and I hadn't read the books, so I didn't know what was going on. But those kind of games are still around. And in fact, the game that I've been playing right now is basically that just with pictures. There's a, a game by Annapurna Interactive called Kentucky Route Zero, and I'm working on that at the moment. And it's basically a choice game. Um, and you're walking around, there's some, you know, some action, but largely you're just choosing the, um, the direction of the action. All of that stuff is like fair game now, no pun intended. Um, I, yeah, if you could find that, that would be amazing. You can just redo it now in your spare time now that, you know, <laughs> in your spare time between being a dean and... <laughs> <laughs> All of the other work you do in the Star Trek franchise. <sighs> anyway. Um, Jay Galloway, hello, um, says, do you guys remember Macintosh Trek Wars? No, I do not. I think that was uh, before before my time. Um, BC says, I found some of those old console Trek games. Go to a quadrant, shoot a Klingon ship. I even wrote one for the TRS-80. Um, does anybody know, can you still play the Kobayashi Maru game? Do you remember this? I did. There's a video on my channel playing the Kobayashi Maru game. Um, it's an 8-bit pixelated thing that came out uh, a, a little while ago. Um, it was actually really fun to do, uh, but it kind of went quiet really quickly. Um, that was that was fun, and like I said, I think um, I think if you guys enjoy the retro thing, I haven't played it yet. But Star Trek Resurgence looks like it's going to be. I mean, it's better graphics than back in the eighties, but it looks like it's going to be uh, uh, kind of the old school, real Star Trek stuff. So yeah. Um, Paul Wright says Bridge Commander was my all time favorite Trek game. Not one I've played, but I believe that was one of the ones. Correct me if I'm wrong, that got put out last year. Oh, I'll, I'll try and find it for you. I can't remember. Um, it was 
Activision, maybe? It couldn't have been Activision. I don't know. Anyway, they, they put out a bunch of those last year, um, and so you can play them again. Anyway, we're rambling. Um, <laughs> thank you guys all for coming. Um, I will leave it there for today. Uh, I got to go because I got to post this show as a podcast, and I'm going dancing. I'm going dancing with my man. So uh, it's going to be fun and uh, hopefully lighten the mood a little bit going into the week. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for all the the, the chat and being wonderful. Um, I was serious, by the way. Go and do something good. I don't know, you know, I don't care what it is, even if it's uh, contributing some money to a charity or writing a writing a letter to your congressperson or something like that. Please just do something, um, and then I want to hear all about it next week. Anyway, thank you again. Um, I love having you guys all here in the chat. Uh, it's wonderful, and I will talk to you next week.